and welcome to Tools to Create a Better Life with myself, Glenice Hughes. Thank you so much for being here. I am so incredibly grateful for you. Ah, so energetic tools to create everything you desire. Yeah. So what the heck are energetic tools? Basically, it's just different ways to play with energy to invite whatever it is that you would like. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing that most people don't want to hear is that when we are asking, when we're inviting, when we're dreaming big, the biggest part to really having it show up is to let go of the specifics of what it is. So for example, years ago, 20, 20, 2002, I guess, 20 years ago. No, it must've been 2004. Okay. Anyway, a long time ago when hubby and I were looking for an acreage around uh, Vermilion, Alberta, which is where we used to live. Uh, we had, I had a very long list. I said we, but no, really it was me. I had a very long list. I think there was 26 things on there, like very specific. It had to have uh, so many bedrooms. It had to have um, so many bathrooms. It had to, the one that I remember specifically is it had to be less than 10 minute drive from Vermilion. So at the time, hubby was working in Vermilion and would often have to go in early in the morning. Morning is not his, his, uh, his sweet spot. So he wanted to not have to have a big drive for those mornings he did have to go in. So we put on our list, okay, less than 10 minute drive from Vermilion to, uh, to the acreage. Anyway, found this beautiful acreage. It ticked off, I believe almost all of them, if not all of them, I don't recall now. Uh, the funniest thing though, is that one month, two months, one to two, one to two months after we moved in there, hubby got a job 30 minutes in the other direction. So it was just so funny. And as I was starting to study more and more energy stuff and really recognizing how when we decide what is the right way, what is the right thing, how much that can actually limit it. So had we maybe asked a little bit different, maybe, you know, been a little bit more open with that, that might have been different. I'm still so grateful for that acreage. It is beautiful. Uh, we were there many, many years. We loved it. It's just one of those funny things that I think about. So fast forward from 2004, when I had 20 something on my list to when we moved into this acreage. And when we were looking, if I remember correctly, we had three or four specifics. One, this was a deal breaker for me. Uh, the internet had to be good because at the acreage in Vermilion, in the, whenever there were leaves on the trees, which was spring, summer, fall, the internet was not very good, just the way that it passed through um, the trees. So my, my deal breaker for here was it had to have uh, good internet. And then the other thing that was important to me was that I had a whole separate space for my business, which I do. The basement pretty much is our business, is my business. Um, and, and then hubby's real, his only ask really was he either wanted a workshop or he wanted space to build one. So those were kind of, and that's it. Everything else we just said, show me what else is possible universe. So I, I played with the energy. I used all sorts of energetic tools, but not from the place of this is the way it has to be. And so same with the internet. Like if we would have seen this place and there was no way to get good internet here, uh, it was just impossible. Or like at the other place, we'd have to take trees down to get it. We just wouldn't have chosen. It. it just doesn't work for me or didn't back then, still doesn't, uh, to not have internet that I can rely on and, and do you know, fun stuff online. So it's this huge gift of really knowing what works for you with this space of letting everything else go. It didn't matter how big this house was. We didn't have on our list, and I honestly could tell you I wouldn't have had on my list a beautiful swimming pool outside. Uh, that's a whole other story for a whole other day, but that was just something I didn't know was possible here in Alberta, Canada, where it's winter which seems to be a lot of the time. Uh, mostly I think because it's February right now and it's time, like you just get really excited for spring when you live in Canada. So there you go. There's an example of when you get really specific, 
you really lock up what the universe can deliver. So the more that you can let go of control. So it doesn't mean you don't have preferences or you don't have asks because you do. You just don't want to limit them with it has to be exactly this. Because that's really when we do that, usually it's a couple things. One, we've either seen somebody else create something like that and we've decided that that's the answer or that's the good part or that's the best way to have it. Um, or we're operating from maybe something we've created in the past. Maybe we had a really good vacation in Mexico one time and now we're always looking to go back to Mexico to recreate that rather than what else is possible that I've never even considered, which takes us, you know, maybe to Mexico, maybe to Europe, maybe to Australia, who the heck knows? There's so many other possibilities when we're open to it and still asking for what we would like. So some energetic tools. Really the number one, one that we use in access consciousness all the time, or at least I do, many of us do, that use these tools is something called the energy pull. Now I have other radio shows on it. I have other videos on it, all sorts of things. We'll link to those below. Uh, But what I want you to just recognize is it's exactly what it sounds like. Energy pull. So you can get the energy of the thing you're asking for. Now pull it to you, right? It's that simple, guys. There's nothing fancy about it. It's really just getting the energy and pull. Now, again, though, with no decision that it has to be that. So when we were looking for, again, when we were uh, looking for this acreage or looking for an acreage, um, I could get the energy of it. I could, I was tapping into the energy of this space but I didn't know where it was. I didn't, I couldn't find it on the listings. The realtor couldn't find it. Not that I could, you know, I didn't say, here's the energy. Can you go find it? Although that would be cool. Um, it just, it just wasn't there. Now I was swapping with a friend and her and I were doing like verbal processing, which is again, access consciousness. You talk about something and you clear it and all of these uh, amazing things. And so her and I were swapping and and I was complaining probably about not finding an acreage yet. And so she asked me a brilliant question and she said, so truth, is it for sale yet? And I got no. Oh my goodness. Well, suddenly all that like intense pressure that I was doing it wrong or I wasn't, it wasn't working or all that insanity just went away because it just wasn't for sale yet. In fact, this place came on sale on a Saturday. We put our offer in on Monday. So pretty much the moment that it was posted, we saw it, we booked in to come and see it on the Monday. We came and saw it. We didn't, we, we made an offer before we left full price. (laughs) That's, that's where I was with this place. It was like, yes, this, and, and I don't mean it's always like that or anything, or it's wrong. If it isn't, it's just, that's, that's where it was, but for probably a good month, if not more, I had so much judgment that we weren't finding it, that I was missing it, that ugh, all the crazy, when really it just hadn't been listed yet. So that's where I come to this energy pull is like, I could energetically perceive it. So even though it didn't have a for sale sign on yet, it was there. So really going kind of back to those decisions and conclusions that we were talking about, like, Get the energy of what you're asking for, start pulling it to you, which is a being, not a doing. Okay, so we do energy pulls, but it's a being. So you can be pulling energy while you're doing dishes, while you're falling asleep at night, while you're going for a run. Like you, you don't have to just do them, like sit quietly and do them. You can, you can add them. The, the, trick I would say at least in my experience is to get the energy of the thing so even though let's let's use something a little bit different like a lover let's say you're looking for a new lover or more lovers or something like that so you just energetically expand out don't worry as I'm saying it you're already doing it with me and you're tapping into them them one and it doesn't mean maybe you're only looking for one new lover and maybe you tap into five that's okay it doesn't mean you have to say yes to all five but you just become aware of that and then you pull them in and of course 
my favorite phrase, as if by magic. So you just start pulling people and things and events and experiences and all sorts of magic to you as if by magic. And then they can show up and then you still have choice. So here's the thing. You might pull in five lovers. doesn't mean you have to have five lovers. You could say no to all of them. You're just, you're, you're doing your part. You're pulling them in. They can show up through, um, you know, a dating app. They could show up at the grocery store. They could show up to clean your driveway. I mean, there's a billion ways they could show up. We're just going to pull and we're going to allow that magic to unravel. So that is one and probably the energetic tool that I would say I use the most, um, although it's kind of hard to say. The other one that I use, and this one I know for some people isn't, doesn't maybe feel very nice or maybe there's just a lot of points of views. I'm going to share it anyway because I do think it's really valuable for those of us who are willing. Uh, we all have what's called killing energy. We all have healing energy and we all have killing energy. Now, if you're like me, you were brought up that the killing energy was the worst thing ever. So the word kill, the idea of killing, murder, all of that is like the absolute worst. Like if I could have done the worst thing on the planet, that would be it. Uh, and, and I agree. <laughs> I'm not saying we should go murdering people. This is not what I'm talking about. And there is an energy, a killing energy that's available to each one of us that we be that if we're willing to be it in those situations, that can actually create a lot of magic. Like if you have some sort of disease in your body, chances are the killing of that disease is what's actually going to create greater. Now, not always, sometimes it's the healing of it, sometimes it's the killing of it. You don't need to figure it out, okay? Don't try to get your mind involved and have all this like, oh, am I doing it right or wrong or what's going on? Uh, you just wanna recognize that we all be a killing energy. And that killing energy can create so much when we're willing to do it, when we're willing to be it, not do it. This is not, again, I am not in any way telling you to kill anyone or anything. It's an energetic killing. So that if you are, again, if you have, if you have cancer of some sort, check in if killing the cancer would create greater or healing could be both could be just one doesn't matter but you want to recognize and this is to me i would say one of the most underutilized energetic capacities that we be because there's so many interesting points of views around it and a lot of times when we talk about it people go straight to the logic of it i'm not talking logical i'm talking energetic so you can kill a conversation I did that a couple summers ago on like I did it on purpose and it was really cool for me to experience it because I'd never really used my killing capacities that way. And there was um, just with extended family and a big group of people and one of the people started um, a conversation that was racist and I just like if you would have looked at me, I did nothing different. I still sat the same. I still did the same. Everything was the same. But energetically, it was like the biggest kaboom of killing energy that I've ever been cognitively aware of delivering at something. So I didn't deliver it at the person. I delivered it at the energy of the conversation. And it was split second. I didn't think about it. This was so boom and it was like boom and nothing else was said nobody it was like it was like the person didn't say anything like it was the most interesting thing because my experience in those situations is that one person says something like that and then other people add to it and then there's those of us who don't like it so maybe we get up and leave or whatever there's all the crazy now could have i just said hey we don't want to talk about that we don't talk like that here or something like that possibly not sure that would have been quite as well received as the kill and done and it was just it was just over so there's so many different ways to be that killing energy when we don't have a point of view about it. So much like I was talking about earlier, we don't want to decide like, oh, I must kill this person or I must kill this situation. It's not that. 
It's just the energy of what's required. And again, it was so split second for me. I didn't think about it beforehand. I didn't go, okay, well, what's going to be the best here? Do I talk to them? Do I say something? Do I stand up and fight? The <laughs> not that I would have. Um, well, maybe I would have. I'm not sure. It just seems funny to me to think about that. But, you know, it was just so boom, there it was. And that really, to me, again, comes with not having a point of view. If you don't have a point of view, so I no longer, believe me, I used to, but I no longer have a point of view about killing energy. So I can, I have access to it whenever it's going to create greater. I can be it in the flash like that. And then once it's over, I'm done. There's no of that. So in, again, in the past, when a family member, friend, whoever would maybe make a racist comment, if I didn't say or do anything, then I would be in the crazy of I'm horrible, I'm just as bad as them, I shouldn't be, you know, making those statements. And then of course, I go into judgment of them, which doesn't create greater and judgment of me, like all the crazy. This way with delivering that stopping the conversation, it being done. It was done. It was absolutely done. And let me tell you, the magic that that creates in my world to not spin in something is huge and to know that i contributed to changing it was huge and truly what else is possible and i'm not saying those situations are always going to be an energetic killing there's going to be times we're saying hey this doesn't work or hey we need to stop this or that doesn't work around here whatever there's times and places for that there's times and places for killing energy there's all sorts of other ones also just going to move my microphone back up a little bit. Uh, so there's all of these pieces of, of like the energetics that we be. So we've talked about energy pulling. We've talked about being the killing energy, which again, the healing energy too, because we're that also. So if you get the sense in a situation where that is the energy that's required, be that. In fact, even talking about them like this is a little bit limiting because we're kind of going, okay, well, here's your choices. You can either do an energy pull, you can kill, killing energy, you can healing energy, uh, whatever else I might talk about. But that's not it at all. The like energetic tools is recognizing that your energy, your, your energetic, you, energy is your first language. So if you would like to change something and you don't have a point of view about it, you really can just ask, what energy could I be here to change this? So notice we're not saying, so I just looked outside, it's snowing outside. Years ago, I would have, if I was starting to use these tools, I would have said something like, what energy can I be for it to stop snowing? Because I decided that summer is the only, you know, appropriate uh, season on the planet. Crazy, I know. Uh, but I had a lot of points of views about it. So we don't ask that because that's not actually letting go of control. What energy can I be to change this? That's a totally different energy. That might mean we get a huge blizzard. That might mean who knows what else. I mean, there's a billion things. So we're, we're just opening it up by, by using energetic tools, either specific ones I've kind of talked about or just being the energy that changes things. Oh, guys, the things you can create, the things, the magic. But again, and I keep repeating this and I do it on purpose because I've worked with so many people around the world. I know you all want to control it. And I do too. Um, although I'm a million times better, like so much better just to really let it go. It was interesting about a week ago, a little over a week ago, uh, I've been waiting on a treadmill for about two and a half months. Yes. And the delivery driver phoned, but I didn't even know it was out for delivery. They told me they would phone ahead of time that it was coming out the next day, all the things. So I didn't answer the phone. I don't. <laughs> I'm just not a phone person. Uh, and then anyway, so didn't get delivered that day. Okay, so then they make a plan a couple days later. Okay, we'll bring it the next day. Okay, cool. Hubby and I are home all day. No delivery. Okay, the next day we head out to, uh, we're taking stained glass classes so cool when do they phone they're sitting at our gate <laughs> when we're at the class and like normally i would be okay what's it going to take for it to arrive like what you know, like doing all the control pieces 
And what I said to my friend is, I know that the universe has my back. This is one thing I know for sure always. So I wonder what is possible with this that I've never even considered. So I'm not asking for it to show up. I'm keeping it quite open for whatever. Like it's, it's just a really bizarre situation and truly what else is possible with it that I've never even considered. And I have asked my body, hey body, if you would like it, cause she's the one who's gonna enjoy it, can you bring it? I've asked the treadmill itself, hey, if you'd like to come, can you get yourself here? Like, so I've engaged and I've employed the other energies involved with it with really this spaciousness of, okay, what else is possible that I've never even considered? And of course, my preference is it shows up. <laughs> so there's this huge dance of it all and pulling it and all of it, all of it. And the willingness to receive all the pieces, all the pieces. So again, in the past, I would have got so mad, so mad. Now they've had it over a week. What the hell? And all the points of views and all the stuff that actually kills it. So this would be killing it in a way that I wouldn't want it to be killed, uh, you know, but complaining and frustrated and all those energies that basically just push it away. So instead it's like, okay, what else is possible that I've never even considered? I wonder what magic I've never even considered with this. Yeah. Yeah. So a few energetic tools. Not the, the number one really though is just to be asking what energy could I be here to change this? And just so you know, you probably won't get a response to that. You're just going to be the energy. Like in the moment you ask that, you're going to be that energy. That's the cool thing about questions is that you ask and you'll be it. Like what energy could I be here to change this? Boom. You be it. It's changing. Now let it go. Let go of the control, my sweet friends. Yes. Oh my gosh. All right. So a couple things I want to invite you to, of course, online foundation, February 19th to 23rd, four hours a day, five days. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited. So, so excited for it. And then of course, in March, we have the Are You Ready to Have It All, which is the book club, a six week book club. We're going to meet twice a week for the projections, expectations, separations, judgments, and rejections. We've got that book club. And then March 2nd, once a day for 30 days, starting March 2nd, we are going to run a hideously successful clearing. There's also like obno obnoxious with money and another part that I forget. Um, so lots coming up, guys. You'll find the link somewhere. Uh, if you don't, just reach out and I will get them to you. Would love, love, love to have you come and play. And the dates are set for the pool party here in July. So if you can get to Canada, if you can get to Alberta, pack your swimsuit and come in July. We're going to have pool party bars. If I remember correctly, that's July 6th or 7th. And then following is the pool party foundation, which is four days because we're going to do the full days. So have an awesome week, sweet friends, and I look forward to chatting again next week.